as for me, as for me, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that you and I will be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Keep me accountable. Check me out. Follow along, please. It's important that you do so. As for me, hmm. by the title, you might be automatically thinking that by that, it's I'm suggesting to you something of a selfish nature. Hardly. Hardly. Let us begin in the proverb for today, the 19th. 19th. It, it, today is the 19th. 10.25 a.m. from Woodstick, Illinois. <laughs> Proverbs 19, verses 1 on to verse 3. Let's read. Come on. Follow me along. Word for word, verse by verse in the scriptures we're going to be looking at, okay? We begin. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity. Now immediately you think of when we think of poor, we think about someone who has no money, right? But when it comes to poor within the scriptures, that's not all it entails. Uh, blessed are the poor, okay, as our Lord says in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, you know, the poor saints at Jerusalem, yes, uh, talking about lack of money and substance, but poor is not just that. The poor saints. The poor saints. Those who are considered poor by the world for following the Lord through the scriptures. Okay? Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity. Our own integrity or the Lord's integrity? Hmm? If our integrity lines up and matches up with the scriptures, then we're doing something right. But if our integrity is self-preserving, uh, self-centered, then there's a problem. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. And the fool has said in his heart, in his heart there is no God. They won't utter with their lips that there is no God. But in their heart, they say there is no God. Hmm. How many have you run into like that? Out there. Even amongst your own family. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. You can't tell the difference between some of these Christians and an open professing atheist who I tend to have a little bit more respect for. I really do. For an atheist who comes to me and says, you know, Brad, I don't believe in anything that you say. I respect uh, what you're doing and that kind of stuff. Well, a few have said to me, but I, I don't believe anything that, you know, about your God or anything like that. I think you are like the one. It's like, well, I think it's a good thing that you're doing, trying to help people and stuff like that, but I don't believe what you're talking about. Um, one second, brethren. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're doing something outside and uh, wanted to have the window open, but uh, anyway. Yes, the fool says in his heart there is no God. But that usually means that they won't with their lips. And like I was saying, um, I have a little bit more respect for an atheist who is at least up front and you know where they stand than one of these Christians who claim that they are. But in every single way, shape, and form, it's like, okay, you, you say that you're... A Christian. And in all the modern definition of that word today, 
Absolutely they are. But are they of the church of the living God, the church of God? No. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. sinneth. Look at this verse again. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. Look at verse 8. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. Oh, yeah. And what is wisdom? You ought to know this by now if you've watched any of these videos. You ought to know this. Wisdom is to fear the Lord. And to depart from evil is understanding. So look at the two verses. He, also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. What knowledge? There are many types of knowledge are out there, isn't there? Well, there's actually two. There are two wisdoms. The wisdom that comes from fearing the Lord, that, that is wisdom. And the fear of man, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. Two wisdoms, okay? Two wisdoms. One of God and one of the earth, of the devil, one of man, okay? Because, remember, Satan values the things of men not the things that are of God, not that Satan values man, but wants to turn man against God. Hmm. So, also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. Verse 8, he that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul, the fear of the Lord. You have the fear of the Lord, you love your own soul. And wisdom, the fear of the Lord, leads on to knowledge which also leads on to understanding. Okay? Understanding, departing from evil. So also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And right away it's like, okay, in context, what, what kind of knowledge is that talking about? And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth, being uh, carried away, chasing after every wind and doctrine by the slight of men. You know, beware of philosophy, okay, and vain deceit, or science, falsely so-called. A lot of people like to dispute that and say, well, that's just saying knowledge. Um, if our Lord were specifically talking about knowledge in that passage, he would have put it there for us, okay? All right? And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Isn't it strange that no matter how many times you are given an opportunity to witness onto certain people and talk with them and even be around them, they are more quick to go off in some other direction, to go after a man, to go after an ideology that has no basis upon scripture. But when it comes to the truth, hmm, <laughs> they are perverse in his lips and they are fools who say in the heart there is no God. But yet, they're willing to go after every little thing under the sun except the truth. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? The foolishness of man perverteth his way. Again, what does it mean to be foolish? To behave, to act as if you say in your heart there is no God. Oh, many people profess with their mouth much love unto the Lord. But their hearts are far from him because they are fools. And they deal foolishly. They act foolishly. Okay? The foolishness of man perverteth his way. Doing things, living in accordance as if there is no God that you say in, the heart, in your heart there is no God. And, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Fretteth against the Lord. Snared by the devil. Snared by the devil of the trappings of this world. You've been around them. You've seen them. You've had an opportunity to witness to them. On to them. Whether by word or by uh, your actions as living according to the scriptures. And you know what, brethren? There comes a time when you have to... 
cut things dry, let them go, and move on. And I know that's hard for a lot of you. It's hard for me sometimes, too. But, you know, you got to realize, brethren, lines have been drawn. Foundations have been set. We are very close to the redemption of the purchased possession. When it's going to happen, I do not know. Nobody does. Nobody does. But we're a lot more closer today than we were yesterday. And being this close unto the redemption of the purchased possession, we are seeing a lot of scripture foretelling of the spiritual climate of these days coming to pass right before our eyes. And men are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. If God is in their pleasures, then okay then, but most of the times it's not because the pleasures that most seek after are the pleasures of this world and of the flesh and of the mind. They are the voyagers who taste the pleasure of the flesh and drunk the pleasures of the mind as well. And that's something. Hmm. But as for me, as for me, this isn't, this isn't talking about relativism either. Hmm. Like it says in uh, the book of John, I believe that's John chapter 22, I believe it is, uh, where Peter looks back when the Lord tells him, feed my sheep. Uh, Peter looks back at John and is like, and Lord, what's he going to do? And the Lord says unto Peter, uh, if I will that he tarry till I come, what's that to you? Follow thou me. Don't worry about that guy. You do what I told you to do. But it, 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 it touches a little closer to home when, say, it's a parent, a wife, a brother, a sister, by blood. Okay, not by adoption in Christ Jesus. Okay, even so, even so, a saved brother or sister who's messed up in something. You try to, it's like, hey, brother, you know, you, 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 you're gravitating into a, it's like, okay, don't want to hear it, all right, okay. As for me, <laughs> I'm going to follow the Lord. And when you say the phrase, as for me, what do you immediately think of? We're going to address that verse towards the end of this video, that passage, that small passage. Most of you right away, uh, when you think, as for me and my house, right, we'll address that later. And looking up this phrase, as for me, I, I used the um, King James Bible online. Uh, it appears 24 times. You know, trying to use Strong's Concordance, looking at the word as, and then going through every appearance of the word as. Mm. But you got to be careful sometimes when you look for certain phrases within Scripture using King James Bible online, because if you put, go ahead, uh, there's a link for it on the channel. I took off the one by uh, for Webster. And hey, Bob, did you find that thing about how it's uh, on... Um, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, you got the written one and you compared the one for speed on the online thing. Yeah, yeah, that time that Webster's 1828 Dictionary uh, went away for a little while, uh, was offline, they messed with it. They messed with it, okay? Kind of fulfilling what uh, uh, some of George Orwell's 1984, I believe, right? Pretty interesting, huh? But when you look uh, up, as for me, it appears 24 times. You look, like I was saying, on King James Bible Online, it says it appears 25. And see, when you look for phrases, um, King James Bible Online does kind of stupid things. One of the appearances is for as for me, they, they go as for me, but that me is Mephibosheth. <laughs> but they, they focus on as for me. And they break up uh, the word, the name Mephibosheth, as for me. I mean, if you do that, you can see for yourself. But other than that, this is just going off of King James Bible Online, okay? As for me appears 24 times. Every single appearance 
in the Old Testament. Every single one. Every single one. That, that is to note. But that also brings us to mind the necessity of also being within the Old Testament as the church of God. To neglect it is to cripple your walk with Christ. And hence we go to Romans 15 verse 4. You ought to know this by heart by now. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay? So, let's look at things that were written aforetime. The first time that I was able to find using King James Bible online, okay, guess who was the first one to say it? The Lord, our Father, our God. Go to Genesis chapter 17. Brethren, we have to remember, God is our God that we serve is a God who chooses. Now, a lot of people will take that and just twist it to this esoteric, you know, in crown, in crowd, exoteric with an X, the common, uh, the laity. Okay, esoteric, the Nicolaitan, exoteric, the laity, okay? Many will take the fact that God is a God who chooses and twist it and go for, for elect and non elect, hence breeding arrogance, okay? Arrogance. Or also chosen and non chosen, okay? <laughs> And a uh, dear friend uh, who made the comment about that lovely heretic, um, we will see what the Lord will do on that. Okay? But the fact is, God is a God who chooses. God is a God who chooses. And it is not the Calvinistic elect or non-elect. It is not like that. What God has chosen is how to be saved within this dispensation, as in the dispensation of the law, as in the dispensation of the patriarchs, and so on and so forth, okay? He chooses the way that we are to be made right with him within that dispensation. And in this dispensation, he has chosen the way of the cross, okay? And if you go to, the, which is the only way to the Lord, the, the way he chose, the way of the cross, then you are part of that elected way, okay? And elect, remember, in the Pauline epistles and within the New Testament, is defined by context. Because, yes, the apple of God's eye are the Hebraic descended from Shem, which Japhethites like me and Hamites like Mark the Messenger are not, okay? We are not of Shem. The Hebrew people are taken out of Shem, okay? You never, never forget that. Never forget that, okay? God chose out of Shem, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, establishing the Hebraic line. God chose the law by faith and works for man in the dispensation of the law. God chose the way of the cross today by his grace through our faith. And so on and so on. God is a God who chooses. Okay? But Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 under verse 5. Check this out. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Now, Abraham did mess up. Yes, he did. Okay? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Perfect. A perfect heart toward the Lord. Remember, this is before the law. The law was written in man's hearts, but it wasn't actually given written in written form yet. So that is to note. 
The dispensation of the patriarchs is very similar to ours today. The big difference is that the crucifixion, okay? The crucifixion. You always remember when it comes to distinguishing the difference between the dispensation of the patriarchs and us today, because a lot of people will tell you that they are the same. They are not. Because during the dispensation of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it was in what God was going to do. You example, Noah, you know, God was going to destroy the world by the flood, okay? And Noah act on what God was going to do, and he did it. Same with Abraham. Okay, he promised him uh, Israel, a bigger Israel that they have today. Abraham acted on that, okay? Today, again, once again, it is finished, okay? That's the difference between the two dispensations, between one of the patriarchs and the, this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, meaning us Gentiles grafted into the tree of the Jew. Always remember, the Jew is the apple of God's eye, which Mark the Messenger is not, which those from England are not, okay? Especially not us of America. <laughs> the melting pot, which is America, okay? Okay? Verse 2, And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram, Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, Here it is, As for me, As for me, Behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be, matter of fact, speaking, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. God chose Abraham. Abraham. He, this is the beginning of the Hebraic line. you got to remember, the word Hebrew is associated with first appearance unto Abram. Okay? Hebrew. From Shem. And you can read the entire genealogy of of Abram, it descends from Shem. Shem, okay? He's, he's Shemitic, but he is a Hebrew because he is taken out of Shem. Not Ham and not Japheth, okay? All right? That's not being racist, by the way, dear friend. That is fact. That is fact. Unless, of course, you don't believe the scripture. And if you don't believe the scripture, then what do you believe? <laughs> You are your own God, knowing good and evil. Good luck. But God chose Abram. God chose the Hebraic line. Remember, God is God who chooses. Not this satanic, wicked, elect the non-elect thing. On the, for That will be in the description box for you. Okay? Verse 5. Neither, and because of God's choosing. Because of God's choosing. And Abram going on within that choosing, a change comes. Remember, unlike what Mr. Calvin says, and just because you may be born into a certain kindred doesn't guarantee you salvation. You got to remember that, okay? Salvation is not at gunpoint. It is not at gunpoint, okay? If it were, then love wouldn't be genuine, would it? Would it? Like, you know that Roman Catholic Sproul, or Sproul, whatever his name is, R.C. Sproul, Roman Catholic Sproul? The guy is a hyper-Calvinist to the point where you, you don't even need to pray. I mean, he, he talks about prayer and stuff, but as far as salvation, hey, you're, you're already saved. You don't need to... You don't need to be broken. You don't need to have contrition. You, you don't need to call on the name of the Lord out of fear for him. No, you're, you're elect, so that's just go go with it. Heresy, heresy, heresy. Roman Catholic Sproul, watch out for him from Legionnaire Ministries. He's a hyper-Calvinist. One of the worst <laughs> Calvinists. <sighs> Calvinists. <sighs> So, some of the older Calvinists, the Puritans, you know, some of their stuff, well, mortification was good, but they were elect and not elect. Never mind. But the change. Verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And see, you got to remember that today in this dispensation, dear friend. It is by his grace 
through our faith. And see, when you get these twits, these galoots, who save themselves by their own belief, or save themselves because they make a statement apart from brokenness and contrition and fear of the Lord, they're going against, they, they are booting the door out of the way. Thank you for that phrase. Yes, by the way, you devil, thank you for that. They boot the door out of the way and the door is Jesus Christ and they climb up some other way. Negating God's chosen way of the cross. And we already know what the cross is. It's death, death to yourself, redemption and new life. And because it's death to self and redemption, forgiveness, you know, and new life, it's an offense unto those who are self-righteous. And you can really see the self-righteous. Especially, especially, I am convinced that Christianity is the breeding ground of self-righteousness. Oh, oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. But God chose, God chose Abram. And because of that choosing, and Abram went along with it, he, you know, by faith, uh, for us today, the example here is by his grace through faith. But see, in this dispensation, dear friend, remember, Christ hadn't died yet. And it was what he would do while today it is finished. Never forget that. Don't let these heretics trip you up trying to say that it's the same as in the times of the patriarchs. It is not because Christ hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. Don't forget that. That's a real subtle little thing that devils will come in and try to trip you up with, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? But as we see, as for me, the first one to say it, according to as I found on King James Bible Online, if you find something else before this, put it in the comment section, please, okay? But as for me, my covenant is with thee. God chose Abram. God chose Abram. Okay? And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Okay? God chose Abram out of Shem to establish the Hebraic people, the Hebrew line. That's the significance of this. Okay? And within this dispensation, again, and we've proved this in the dispen uh, rightly dividing videos, okay? What makes this, again, I've got to say this again, uh, what makes this difference is what God was going to do. Don't forget that, okay? But as for me, as for me, as for me, God chose. He didn't choose, he didn't choose Japheth. He didn't choose Ham. He chose Shem. And he chose Abram out of Shem, the Hebrew. Okay? Now let's look at, uh, and of course, go back to, um, as far as the choosing thing, uh, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 on verse 3. And uh, check the, uh, the, if you want to, the genealogy onto Abram in Genesis chapter 11. Here, let's look very quickly at one verse. These are the generations of Shem. That's verse 10 in uh, Genesis chapter 11. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begat a foxad two years after the flood. And remember, it's Shem's tent. Shem's tent. Okay? Remember that. So Abram is descended of Shem. Okay? But Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. And right there, it's like, how can you prove that the dispensation of the patriarchs is different from today? <clears throat> right away, very something simple. Uh, unto a land that I will shew thee. I will shew thee. Okay? And I will Make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will 
Bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And of course, that comes upon us through Jesus Christ. Note the I wills. There's one, two, three, four I wills in those three verses. Four I wills. And Satan, in Isaiah chapter 14, there are five I wills. Hmm. And in the book of John, there are four capital L light. Hmm. Mm. Satan is counterfeit. To be anti is not only to be against, but to replace. Perfect example on that, antiperspirant, okay? It removes the, uh, you know, uh, makes, does something cancerous to your skin to eliminate perspiration from the pits, but it also replaces with some feminine stench, usually, okay? The only example I could think of. But that's what is anti, to be against and to replace. Okay? Okay? All right? But note those I wills. God choosing. Now go to Ezekiel chapter 9. Now that is God choosing to establish the Hebraic people through Abram. And also from the Hebraic line comes the Lord Jesus Christ. For Because is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah, okay, of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? All right, but uh, go to Ezekiel chapter 9. Here's another occurrence of as for me. 11 verses. We're going to read all 11, okay? Ezekiel chapter 9. He also, he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the hired gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's and corn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of God, uh, and the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the riders and corn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh. And that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, in the midst of Jerusalem, in the midst of what God has chosen for that dispensation under the law. But note the thing of the mark, okay? Now, a lot of people like to intuit the mark of the beast with this, okay? This is not talking about the mark of the beast. But it is important to note that this idea, this thing of putting a mark on the forehead. Where do we see it begin? We just saw it. Our Lord. Okay? A little bit more on this. Okay? A little bit more on this. Because a lot of people will say like, Hey! The mark of the beast. There's a mark. What's the difference? Remember, Satan is a counterfeit. He is against and wants to replace. We just saw. We just saw hopefully you're following along as you should be but we just saw okay let's read this again verse 4 don't look at me look at the scriptures okay and the Lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of Jerusalem through the midst of the city the midst of Jerusalem among whom the Hebraic people the city of the great king which is Jerusalem okay Okay, you got that? Okay. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that what? Sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. They weep for Jerusalem. How man has corrupted what God has said. That sort of thing. So God says, set a mark on them. On, in their foreheads. On this. Go to Revelation. Go to Revelation. Okay, Revelation chapter 
14. Okay? Now, in Revelation chapter 13, you see the counterfeit mark of the beast, which is in either in the forehead or in their right hand, that no man might buy or sell save those that had the mark. Okay? And you watch, you Christians that get left behind, okay? Those of you who get left behind, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to try to wickedly tie in these two occurrences, the one in Ezekiel chapter 9 and in Revelation chapter 13. Okay? He's going to tie that in together because he's going to be coming looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus, wearing a suit, probably. Okay? And, uh, uh, I don't, I gotta mention this. I don't know what Grider's man crush is for that macaroni guy. But, uh, that, that guy is convinced that macaroni, that, ma whatever his name is from France, he is convinced that that is the son of perdition. <laughs> it's a little crazy. I think he's got a man crush on him. I, I really do. <laughs> I really do. But, you watch, you Christians that get left behind. You watch. The Son of Perdition is going to meld together Ezekiel 9 about the mark, okay, that God established. We just saw it in Ezekiel chapter 9 versus the mark that he establishes, okay? Now, note, and where we're looking at, in Revelation chapter 14, the one verse, one verse. We see it again, okay? Revelation 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand Jehovah's Witnesses. No. No. A hundred and forty-four thousand Hamites. From Harlem! Like that idiot Manning guy said. No. Oh, a hundred and forty-four thousand from England! Do you look into the heresy of British Israelitism? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thought you were pretty slick in hiding that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, you're crazy. Okay. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Hmm. Now, see, in Ezekiel, talks about a mark. But see, here in Revelation 14, 1, it talks their name written in their foreheads. Okay? Was in Ezekiel chapter 9, this mark in their foreheads, the name? I don't know. The, it specifically says in verse 4, and said a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And see, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to utilize that mark. It's like, you're sighing for all the economies collapsing. When see, in Ezekiel, and you people who get left behind, you try to remember this, okay? Uh, see, in verse 4 in Ezekiel chapter 9, the sighing is over Jerusalem. The things that be of God. Satan, because he's going to destroy all the economies of the world in a fell swoop, I believe, Oh, and institute the mark of the beast, okay? He's going to use that similarity in Ezekiel 4 for his agenda. Because, hey, everybody will be signed because all the things of the world are taken away and stuff like that. And all the economies are destroyed and whatnot. You watch, you people get left behind, okay? But we see that in Revelation 14, the 144,000... They are Hebrews. They are Jews. And if you were to read the whole chapter, you would see that it is Jews, okay? Uh, let me see. Uh, does this... Uh, no, that says that earlier on. But uh, the 144,000, okay? Having his father's name written in their foreheads. Uh, I believe that one second. Yes, it's in Revelation chapter 7 where it says about the 144,000... Well, of, of the uh, sealing of the tribes, 144,000, they're Jews, okay? Jews descended of the tribe of um, Jews, descended from all the tribes of 
Israel, okay? 144,000 of Shem, okay? Okay? But we see that, in, again, in Revelation chapter 14, 1, about the 144,000 Jews that have the name of their God written in their foreheads. Hmm. And also, too, to note, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 4, uh, let's see. No, let's read Re uh, Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 on to verse 4, okay? And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb, one throne, shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. This is after sin is abolished, the seventh and final dispensation, okay, where there is no sin. Okay? So you see, the mark of the beast that Satan implements is actually a copycat of what the Lord does basing off of Ezekiel chapter 9 okay keep that in mind those of you who get left behind okay now let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 9 and continue on verse 5 and to the others he said in mine hearing go ye after him through the city and smite let not your eyes spare neither have ye pity Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. And if judgment begins at the house of God, well, what's going to be the outcome for those who are not of the church of God? Okay? I know it says house of God in that passage. But we are the church of the living God, not Christians. Okay? Okay. Yes, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house, and he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain, go ye forth. And they, they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Oh, God taking, uh, uh, letting, putting his fury on Jerusalem? Very similar, similar as to the time of Jacob's trouble. See? The 144,000 get the name in the forehead. Uh, here, they have a mark in their forehead. Mm -hmm. Satan's a copycat. Satan is anti, which is against and replace. Okay. Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me... Also, God is a God who chooses. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense with an S, a verb, okay, their way upon their head. Mm. Now, as we saw in Genesis chapter 17, God, as for me, my covenant will be with thee, choosing the way for that dispensation, okay? He did that in Genesis chapter 12, you know, go to the land that I will shew thee. But he, God chose, you know, mercy through Abraham, which God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, would come from the Hebraic line, okay? We also see, as for me, also, mine eyes shall not spare Neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. Hmm. 
Verse 11, And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. God who chooses. God who chooses. You don't want to be around when God decides to pour out his wrath on this earth. His wrath is going to be poured out on this earth for seven years, the time of Jacob's trouble. You can escape this time coming. But see, the catch is, you got to die. You got to die to yourself. You got to be broken of that self-righteousness. And like I said, I am persuaded. I am totally convinced that Christianity is the breeding ground for self-righteousness. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to be broken of your self-righteousness. You got to have godly sorrow, contrition, and you better fear the Lord and call upon his name in that state of three. Interesting, of three. Hmm? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Isn't it? Now, we're not going to be looking at every appearance of as for me, but we're going to spend a majority of our time now within the Psalms. Within the Psalms. Absolutely. Life is in the Psalms, dear friend. Again, like I've told you many a time, and I will tell you until I can tell you no more. <clears throat> yeah, you... Uh, <laughs> Yes, dear friend. If you don't read the Old Testament, you're crippling yourself. But let's read here in uh, Psalm chapter 5. Psalm chapter 5. Excuse me. Psalms don't have chapters. One second. Okay, yeah, forgive me. Psalms don't have chapters. Forgive me. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Yes, first thing in the morning when you wake up. You know, sometimes literally flop out of bed. Spend time in prayer with the Lord. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. Hey, you Christians, you are aware of that, right? You are aware of that, right? You got the easy believism guys who say, don't worry about it. Oh, oh, you shouldn't do that, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No. Uh, for thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Are you foolish? I hope not. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. The Lord will abhor extreme hatred. Mm. But as for me, here's the turn in the psalm. Here's the turning point. But as for me, okay, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Dispensational difference. They had the temple back then, okay? Today, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost because if you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you, the Lord, the Holy Ghost, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit, dwells within you, okay? All right? But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. And comparing this for verse, from verses 4 on to verse 6, look at the contrast there, okay? For thou art not a God that has, hath pleasure in wickedness. Well, a lot of Christianity, a lot of Christians will give you the impression that, well, God... You know, God doesn't have pl uh, pleasure in wickedness. No, but it's okay. God loves you. He understands. Yeah, he understands. 
that man is wicked at his core, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Okay? Okay? And also that the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Okay? Remember, a fool says in his heart there is no God. To be foolish is to live, to act, to behave as if there is no God. Oh, how many Christians do you know do that? I'm not talking about the atheists. Because at least with most of the atheists, at least they are up front with you about it. At least they'll be like, hey, like, like I said, they're, you know, the, the atheists that have contacted me, uh, especially one in particular. It's like, you know, Brad, I, I don't believe at all what you're saying, but I respect what you do. Well, well thank you. And at least, at least you're up front about it. <laughs> Okay? But with the Christians, with the Christians, ah, they're okay with foolishness. Well, you shouldn't do that thing. But don't worry. God loves you. God understands. What, to do evil that good may come? I don't think so. Yes, thou shalt destroy them that speak, least sing. Hmm. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Mm. But as for me, you've warned them, you've spoken to them, you have reasoned with them through the scriptures. And no, no. See, we are to stand for the faith once delivered unto the saints, whereas those of the world, the Christians, they stand for the things that are contrary to Scripture, contrary to God. They say that, oh, you shouldn't do wickedness, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, okay? Oh, I, I believe in Jesus, but they live as fools. Hmm. But as for me, I will come into thy house, into the multitude of thy mercy, in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Being an ambassador for Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Okay? Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. As for me. See, you got Christianity living by a contrary standard than the scriptures telling you that good is evil and evil is good. These Christians will get will attack you, Church of God, Church of the Living God, for standing for the standard of Scripture. You're too extreme, or you're causing division. You're in a cult. Oh boy, I like that one, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what ought we, the Church of God, lead me, O Lord, in Thy Righteousness. Thy righteousness. And the contrast. The contrast. Thy righteousness. Uh, from verses 4 on to verse 6. Wickedness and foolishness. Leasing. Bloody and deceitful men. Telling you that evil is good and good is evil. Lord, help me to walk. Help me to live well according to your scriptures. I want to make the right choices. <coughs> <coughs> and so, excuse me, <coughs> so that in departing, they will remember, well, so-and-so, he, 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 he wasn't like any of these Christians. He, he, he said he believed in Jesus, but, you know, the Christians that I've met, they, he didn't walk like that, or she didn't walk like that. The way we live, again, dear friend, the way we live our lives according to the scriptures reflects our Lord Jesus Christ. And like I said, lines have been drawn. Things have been rooted. 
Heresy abounds. Some of our best witness will not always be in what we say. Faith cometh by hearing, yes, and hearing by the word of God. But who's hearing? Who's hearing? Very few. Very few. Because the time has come. Scripture says the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine, but shall heap to themselves teachers like Mark the Messenger, like David Wood, okay? <laughs> like, uh, uh, what's that? Um, oh, Jenkins guy. Wow. Wow, man. Wow. Oh. Or hell song? Yeah, there's Christianity for you. There's Christianity for you. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. Yes. But in their hearts, they are fools. They, are, they say in their heart there is no God. They don't say with their lips. Look, look, look at that. They flatter with their tongue. They wouldn't dare say testimony from brethren when they were lost, false converts. I would never have said that there was no God, but in my heart, I lived as if there was none. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. And they will. They will. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that have put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. The difference between those who are false and just take the appellation upon them. The name. Christian, what Christ are you representing? Christianity, Christianity, all of it. Christ that they're represented is that man of sin and self perdition. Not Jesus Christ, God our Father. Now, go to Psalm 17. Psalm 17. We are going to be reading verses 8 on to verse 15. Okay? As for me, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. We, as the church of the living God, we walk our lives according to the scriptures. And when the Lord gives us a chance to speak his word, praise the Lord. But who's hearing right now? Fewer and fewer and fewer. Fewer and fewer and fewer daily. Oh, and especially the Christians. Especially the Christians. You know, you, you, you meet them outside in their parking lots when they're getting out of their church buildings that they worship, handing out tracts. They get offended. I don't need this. <laughs> yeah? You sure about that, pal? You sure about that? I was just in church. Yeah, you were in a building, worshiping a building. They don't like that when you tell it to them as it is like that. Oh, they don't like that. Then you try to put. Then you pull out a set of scriptures on them. You take out the sword to read to show them something. Oh, oh! That's for me. Verses eight hundred verse fifteen, and we're going to have slight expository here. Slight. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. And remember, this is doctrinally under the law this was written for. This is our instruction in righteousness. In context, okay, in context, prayer of David, okay, uh, Jesus is the son of David, king of the Jews, okay? So in context, the apple of the eye, 
Mystic Jew, the Hebrew. The Hebrew. Why do you think there are so many people out there saying they are Jews and they are not? Okay? But keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me. From my deadly enemies who can pass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. Oh, yeah. And we're not talking about, no, you know, literal fat. But some of them are. Okay? But, again, the example of Christianity. Okay? They are enclosed, enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. Hmm. Like his scales are his pride, that they are so close that no air can come betwixt them. They're enclosed in their own fat. No air can get to them. Air, words. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You tell me you haven't seen that in your witness. The door is still open. The door is still open and has not shut. The Titanic is sinking. We still can shovel coals into the furnace to give light as it's sinking. Okay? The lights haven't gone out yet. Not yet. They have now compassed us in our steps, haven't they? Haven't they? They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Bowing down to the earth as if they are of us. But aren't we? Catholics! We're surrounded by Catholics. We're surrounded by coadjutors. We're surrounded by the profane, by the false. We're behind enemy lines, brethren. There are those of you, my brethren, my close friends. You're surrounded. You're surrounded. But as for me, but as for me, Verse 12, like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. And of course, where do we go for the reference on this? I didn't even look in the scriptures if there was a reference. I, I reckon there is. Where do we go? We go to 1 Peter chapter 5. Okay, 1 Peter chapter 5. And note that, of what we, we saw there, note that, okay, in verse 12, like as a lion. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 on verse 10. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. As for me, as for me, I bow my knees now. As for me, the world going to hell in a handbasket. I'm going to walk according to his integrity. Okay? And you got to remember, too, you, you might be thinking, well, Job said, I will walk in mine integrity. But you got to remember about Job, he got a glowing testimony from the greatest source that anyone could get, the Lord himself. Okay? The Lord himself. All right? Keep that in mind. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. All your care upon him, because he careth for you. If the Lord says no, what are you going to do? Flatter, conceive, connive, right? I like that word, connive. I know quite a few people who are, unfortunately. Be sober, unclouded. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion. Remember, our Lord is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And you see a lot of these images of a lion with uh, KJV and stuff like that. And I get it. I get it. Excuse me. I get it. I get it. But you got to remember, again, Satan is a counterfeit. He is anti against and replace. Because what is uh, Satan saying again in Isaiah chapter 14? I will be like the Most High. Okay? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, 
walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. In the faith. <laughs> Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You're not alone, brother, sister. Your family's against you. You're the only one in the church of the living God. In your family, in your house. You're not alone. You're not alone. Not alone. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, by Christ Jesus, the way of the cross, the way of the cross, called the way of the cross. Okay? After that you ha after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen you. And verse eleven, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Back to Psalm 17, picking up at verse 13. Arise, O Lord. Arise, O Lord. Like in Psalm 102, now will I arise and save Zion, I believe he says in uh, Psalm 102. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked. Which is thy sword. Which is thy sword. That's interesting. And for that, go to Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah 51. Man, God will use man as a tool of his judgment. Satan is being allowed to do what he is doing. For judgment. For judgment. Man, often, you know, when God takes his hand off of someone who is saved, who's messing around in sin, hand them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved for a thing of judgment. You people who are lost, you're under you're under judgment. You're under judgment. Okay? But God will use man. He will use man. God uses many things as judgment. But he will use man as a weapon, as a tool of his judgment. Uh, Jeremiah 51, verses 19 on to verse 25. Oh, where are you? Wow, okay. Verses 19 on to verse 25 in Jeremiah chapter 51. Oh, and by the way, you take the time to read Jeremiah 51 in comparison of uh, Proverbs 7 and Revelation 17. Wow! <laughs> wow! Wow! And then again, you do that, people will say, see, Babylon is actual Babylon, not Catholic Church. Catholicism is the Babylonian religion, you idiot. And I say that to you with love. Okay? Revelation chapter 17 is talking about Roman Catholicism. Okay? Roman Catholicism bases what it is off of the Babylonian religion. Okay? So, verses 19, wow. Of course, I'm doing a video and the emails are going crazy. Mm. Go figure. All right. Uh, do, what, what are we doing? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. 19 on to verse 25 in Jeremiah chapter 51. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. 
And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, said the Lord. Hmm. You got to remember too, here in Jeremiah chapter 7, 27, we're going to go backwards with this. We're going to go backwards with this. Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians, for a time, were used as God's battle axe. Were used to punish the nations. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 27, verses 5 on to verse 7. I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. Unto whom it seemed meet unto me. God who chooses. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. You looking at that? Don't look at me. Come on now. This is serious. Come on. Get serious. For a change. Okay? My servant. My servant. And of course, you read Daniel chapter 4. I totally believe without a doubt that Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. Absolutely. Absolutely. Was he his servant at this time? Knowingly, no. But was Nebuchadnezzar being used of God to fulfill God's purposes? Yes. Hence, my servant. And the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. And if Paul fought with beasts at Ephesus, likening men onto beasts, natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, And all nations shall serve him, and his son and his son's son, until the very time of his land come. And then, and then, and then, many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And then in scripture, you see the three, uh, three of the line of Nebuchadnezzar, Belteshazzar, and um, might see another, but <clears throat> that is fulfilled. And then Cyrus, Darius, okay, they take vengeance on Babylon. The Lord's vengeance. There are you devils out there who might be so, oh, uh, see, your God's using me as a thing of judgment. Oh, <laughs> little, little, uh, don't hurt your elbow by patting yourself on the back there, tough guy, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nation... Uh, that was uh, what we to, were to read to, weren't we? Yes. Yes. And then all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. Nebuchadnezzar didn't see the destruction of his kingdom unto his son and son's son. And after that, then the destruction of Babylon came. And going backwards, like I said, Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 12, under verse 14. Um, if God is using people as a weapon, a tool of his judgment, those people that he uses as a tool of his judgment, they pay a heavy price usually. Uh, Jeremiah 25, verse 12, under verse 14. And it shall come to pass, when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolations. Keep that in mind if you're lifting up yourself thinking that you're God's judgment weapon or something like that. Be careful, tough guy. <laughs> Be careful. Uh, you're going to pay a heavy price. But yes, God will use man as a tool of his judgment. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also. 
and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Yes. 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 And remember in the book of Deuteronomy, and he said, unless the enemy, you know, exalt himself saying, the Lord hasn't done this. Yeah. The Lord allows only certain things to happen to his own people, to those who are his children. If uh, something is happening to you, it's because the Lord allowed it. Okay? And you who are lost, who are not his, Satan has his full reign with you. Okay? The Lord doesn't punish his own children, uh, doesn't punish those who are not his. Meaning, he doesn't correct those who are not his. See, he corrects and chasten us to make us better. Okay? So that we line up with Scripture. So that we will not suffer the fate of the wicked. Okay? That's why we get chastened by the Lord. Because the Lord loved us. Okay? He chastens us. You of the world, you who are lost, you Christians. The only time God's going to pay attention to you is when he's putting, uh, spilling his wrath upon you. That ought to scare the hell out of you. That ought to scare the hell out of you. Let's continue now in Psalm uh, 17. Picking up at verse 14. Okay. Let's read verse 13 and 14. Arise, O Lord, disappoint them. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From men which are thy hand, O Lord. From men of the world. And then we just looked at about what this is talking about. The Lord using man for judgment. Okay? His hand. Hand of judgment. Okay? From men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure, they are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Verse 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I, will, I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. And of course, when we are resurrected, Okay, when we are resurrected, we will have that heavenly body. Okay, not an earthly body, but a heavenly body. Okay, I will behold my, thy face in righteousness, in his righteousness. I shall be satisfied. The Lord doesn't satisfy you? Can't the Lord do anything? Is anything too hard for the Lord? If the Lord doesn't satisfy you in all things, perhaps you're looking at the wrong thing. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Now, th thy likeness. Thy likeness. Number one. Psalm 17. Written under the law. Psalm 17. A psalm of David. Under the law was faith and works. Okay? You did the works of the law and your faith was in God would honor you for doing the works of the law. Animal sacrifices for sins and that kind of stuff. Okay? Okay? Your faith was in God that he would honor you according to what you did according to the law. Okay? And if you kept the law, that righteousness that was of the law was a self-righteousness. It was. Because, because, what could they say? I kept the law. I did this. I do that. Yes. The law made no, nothing perfect. Okay? The law made nothing perfect. Okay? We, we talked about that. We talked about that. The law is not sin. No. The law is perfect. But see, man can't keep the law perfectly. Okay? Man can't keep the law perfectly. So this was under the law, which was faith and works. Okay? Faith and works under the law. All right? So when it says here, I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. And the dispensation that was faith and works. 
but thy likeness. You get people talking about imitating Christ. And a couple of years ago, the Lord uh, had me to do a video about Are We Little Christ? will be in the description box. Um, imitate, by the way, dear friend, is not found in the scriptures. Okay? It's not. You will not find imitate found in the authorized version of the scriptures. And see, Catholics are really big on imitating Christ. Christians are, uh, we, I saw it on the billboard here of the Methodist church building. Imitate Christ. So imitate Christ. See, what's the underlying thing of when someone says to imitate Christ? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, that ye are gods. Christ never sinned. Christ is God the Father. Christ can create things. His word. He is the Word made flesh. So whatever He says, He can create. He can kill. He can do anything. So when you've got people coming around saying, imitate Christ, what are they really saying? That you're God. Watch out for that. But see, this thing about awake with thy likeness. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Okay? Matthew chapter 10. We want verses 24 and 25. Matthew chapter 10. Verses 24 and 25. Okay? The amount of emails I get is astounding to me. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, <laughs> excuse me, Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? So it could be as the master. As his, what does that say? What does that say? It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. When our Lord said that, they were still under the law. So faith and works was still a requirement then. Okay? So when he said that, the disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. Like Christ, you could say, right? This was under the law. He hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. Okay? And the thing about that is, go to Galatians chapter 4, okay? Jesus Christ was under the law. And see, Jesus Christ did what man could never do at his best. He kept the law. And he not only did he keep the law, he kept that law perfectly, okay? Uh, Galatians chapter 4, verses 3 on to verse 7. Even so we... When we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Under the law. Under the law. Christ was under the law. The life He lived was a perfect life, lived under the law. So when, in the context that we looked at, before the death, burial, and resurrection, you, see, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? If you don't, you become Mark the messenger. Okay? <laughs> if you don't, you become a Pentecostal. Okay? you got to rightly divide the word of truth. When our Lord said that, okay, he hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. He hadn't shed his blood on the cross yet. Awake with thy likeness, being right according to the keeping of the law. Okay? That's what that's talking about. That's a good, that's good for our instruction in righteousness? Absolutely. But see, what happens is you get these twits, these Christians, with the imitation of Christ thing. And that book written by that Catholic guy, that was crazy, by the way. But when you have Christians saying, imitate Christ, what are they saying? Are we under the law? 
No, we're not. We're under the law of Christ. But the law of the Old Testament? No, we're not under that. We're not. We've been set free from that. Because we, could, we couldn't keep that even if our lives depended on it. Okay? So remember that. Okay? He was made under the law. And when he said, it is, <clears throat> it is enough that the servant be as his master. His master was keeping the law perfectly. But guess what? Man can't keep the law perfectly. But see, the example that he was giving before the death, burial, and resurrection with, in that context that we looked at was of one who was keeping the law. Okay? Keeping the law. Instruction in righteousness? Absolutely. It's not doctrine. It's not doctrine for us today. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. When our Lord says that, it's for our instruction in righteousness. To be humble and meek, okay? Because remember what our Lord did. He set his mind toward the cross and was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Okay? Okay? All right? And on that, on that, go to John chapter 13. Let, let, let the Lord uh, say it himself, okay? Let the Lord say it himself. John chapter 13. Okay? Got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. John chapter 13, verses 12 on to verse 17. Okay? So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? <coughs> ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye, ought also, ye, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example. An example that ye should do as I have done to you. Washing the feet of others. What we need nowadays is for men to wash one another's feet. And in washing someone's feet, you're washing off dirt, grime, and stink. Okay? So that usually in, uh, involves an abrasive of some type to get that scum, filth, and stink off of the foot. Like Shakespeare said, Sometimes, in order to be kind, one has to be cruel. Meaning, taking the sword, bashing them upside the head with it. Okay? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that sent him sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, if ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. The example that he gave. Okay? And what example did Jesus give? Following God. Loyal. Or excuse me, excuse me. Loyal is not in scripture. But um, set his uh, sights steadfast on what he was here to accomplish. Okay? See, the life that our Father lived, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The life that he lived in that flesh that was sinful was our example, okay? Was an example, yes, okay? His focus was all on what God was doing because he is God the Father. But see, and that life he lived was the example given, okay? All right? All right? So again, when you see, when we read about thy likeness, okay? Got to remember, that was written under the law. Okay, and this is before the death, burial, and resurrection too. But he said here in John 13, For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done unto you, wash one another's feet. Care for others. How do you love your enemy? You tell them the truth. You warn them. You warn the Christian, uh, Hey, man. You, you need to consider whether or not you're truly saved. Just because you go and congregate in a building doesn't make you saved. Okay? Just because you believe, the devils also believe and tremble. Okay? People say many things. Doesn't make you saved. 
That's how you show love to your enemies. You tell them the truth. But do they have ears to hear? Do they have ears to hear? And about see, and also now, go to First Corinthians chapter one, for, uh, eleven. Excuse me, First Corinthians chapter eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verses one and two. Paul in this dispensation, okay. See what he was talking about was for that dispensation about the uh, servant being as the master, okay. In the context. Of keeping the law and then in John chapter 13 you know about the washing of one another's feet I washed my wife's feet at her wedding at our wedding excuse me <laughs> excuse me okay I washed my wife's feet with a towel something abrasive to wash off whatever was on her feet okay in order to be made clean there has to be an abrasive there isn't right right some kind of abrasive okay and he was going to the cross by John chapter 13. Okay? The dispensation, that transition was happening from him going to the cross, to the cross, that time period. Okay? The law was still binding until he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. By his death brought in the New Testament. Okay? So until the death of the testator, the law was still binding. Okay? Forget that. But Paul... 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 2. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. See, under the dispensation of the law, there was a different way in which to follow the Lord. And that was the way of the law. That's what, that is what Christ was talking about. For our instruction in righteousness. Mwah, brava. Yes. There. Doctrinally, doctrine as pertaining to salvation within the dispensation. No, no, because what happens? Imitate Christ. You can't be sinless. You can't create something out of nothing. Okay, okay. You are not God. Someone imitate Christ. Christ never sinned. So what? You're sinless, huh? Huh? You can raise the dead? You can heal the sick? What's wrong with you? Watch out when people... And imitating Paul? Like I said in the previous video, if Paul, if Paul found out that some of you made him your hero or seek to imitate Paul, he'd smack you. I know he would. Those of you in the church of the living God, you know that too. But be ye followers of me, not Paul himself, his example, his example, even as I also am of Christ. See, Paul is our example of how we follow Christ within this dispensation. Okay? Our Lord was talking about in context within the dispensation under the law. You gotta rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. The ordinances that I as I delivered them to you. What is he talking about? Written scripture. The ordinances. Okay? Where do you find the ordinances that Paul delivered? In the scripture. Okay? His epistles. All right? His epistles. Doctrinally, okay? And how to live for instruction and righteousness is all right here. Doctrine for us today is found primarily within the Pauline epistles. Okay? Current for this dispensation. That's what he's talking about. Okay? And also, of course, of course, I mentioned this in the previous video, but got to gotta mention it again because it's meat to be mentioned again. Philippians chapter 3, just one verse, verse 17. Okay. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. And as we did in the previous video, let's continue. 
For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, which is death. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, flesh, okay? And whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Like in Psalm 5 that we looked at already. Calling evil good and good evil. Now you shouldn't do that, but don't worry about it. God's grace covers everything. God's, God loves you and he understands. A little doesn't hurt. And, of course, more on this. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 21 on to verse 24. For even I hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example Paul, that ye should follow his steps. His steps. Death to self. Okay? Not my will, but thine be done. His prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay? Not my will, but thine be done. He must increase, I must decrease. The life of Jesus Christ, God the Father, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. It was a life of death. He came here to die, obviously. A life leading on to death. Keeping the law perfectly, which no man could do. Okay? No man could do. But see, his example, not my will, but thine be done washing one another's feet. Okay? Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. See, that's where we falter. You sin every day. Hey, I sin every day. You say that you don't sin every day. You lie. Your breath stinks. I can smell it all the way over here through the plastic. You lie. Uh, you say you don't sin every day. You're a liar. And guess what? Lying is a sin. Oh, I don't sin anymore. You, you just lied. You're a sinner. Okay? I'm a saved sinner. Are you a saved sinner or a lost sinner? Which one are you? Yeah. But see, again, Christ did what no man could do. He kept the law perfectly. He never sinned. Christ never sinned. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. He must increase, I must decrease. Not my will be done, but thine be done. Okay? The life of death. Death to self. What does our Lord say? He who loses his life for my life for my sake, the same shall find it. And the life of death that is of the church of the living God is a life of joy, peace, and love in the Holy Ghost. Which the Christians try to imitate, but they can't. They can't. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you will heal. The example of selflessness. That is the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. What he was talking about before the death, burial, and resurrection was pertinent onto the dispensation at that time. And at that time, he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. But the law was still binding. you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. That, that's one of the bigger problems with Christianity. They don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Now go to Psalm 26. Psalm 26. See, as for me, as for me, 
Okay. As for me, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. You know, the Lord uh, opens up doors for us, and we get the chance to speak to people and to preach the word outside. Some hear, some don't. But those ears that are hearing are getting less and less. Psalm 26. Psalm 26. Psalm 26. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. Psalm of David. Mine integrity. David was doing what? Keeping the law. So God's integrity was in the law. So it says mine integrity. And David was a man after, sought after, ran after, if you will, God's own heart. He, David did not have God's heart. But that, that's blasphemy to say that. No, he, he went after it. He sought it. Okay? After God's own heart. Okay? So, just like Job, mind integrity. Okay? David, mind integrity. Keeper of the law. Okay? Under the law, you wanted to be right with God, you had to do it his way with, according to the law. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore I shall not sigh. The verse explains itself. Okay? David's integrity was that after the Lord. Based upon the Lord. The integrity of Christians... It's based off of uh, a God, a little G God, the God of this world, when they're calling evil good and good evil. To be like the world, to win the world. To bring in the world to their pagan buildings. Yeah. 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 Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Have you ever prayed for that before? scary, isn't it? It's scary. It's scary when the Lord is the church of the living God. When you get when you get a little too ahead of yourself. And the Lord's like, in prayer, it's like, you know, I think you need to be shown a little. To be reminded from whence you came. Yeah. That's a scary thing. For the Lord to remind you how big of a nothing you truly are. Of how big of a nothing I truly am. You know, take a hand of dirt in your hand. Take some dirt in your hand and let it fall through the cracks of your hands. That's what you are. That's what I am. We're dirt. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes and I have walked in thy truth. You don't have, if you have it, it's because God allowed it. You devils, you're alive today because the Lord's long-suffering giving you a chance to repent. And if you haven't repented and have made your choice, well, you're, I, I like to say that you're just probably choosing the degrees of your temperature in the lake of fire. I have not sat with vain persons. Neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated... The congregation of evildoers. I will not sit with the wicked. Why the company you keep? I will wash mine hands in innocency. So will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. <laughs> the Lord save me of all people. And tell of all thy wondrous works. I was a liar. I was a cheat. I was a sodomite. I was an adulterer. I was never married until my wife. But I had an affair with a married woman. A few actually. Okay. God saved me of all people. Me. He did that through the cross. 
He broke me of my son. Because it was, I put him on that cross. It was my fault. And unless he saved me, I'm going to hell. See? Tell of his wondrous works. Not boast of yourself through the Lord. The Lord through you. There's a big difference. And in Christianity, a lot of Christians here on YouTube even, and on other platforms, blur that dis uh, distinction. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house, and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Again, dispensational di uh, difference. Talking about the temple. Today, the Lord lives within us. Okay? Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, which we already uh, heard, or which we already looked at, that God will abhor the bloody and deceitful man, right? In whose hand is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. And his integrity was an integrity based off of what God said. And this dispensation that we're looking at specifically for the law. Is your integrity something of your own concoction? Or is your integrity upon keeping what God had said for us today within the scriptures for us today by walking, upon, walking according to his standard? My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. And as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Is your integrity scripturally based? Hmm? David's, David's was. Paul's was. Peter, the apostles, all of them. The integrity that they had was not one of their own, but one founded upon Scripture. See how important the Scriptures are, dear friend? Okay? Now, Psalm 35. Psalm 35. Psalm 35, verses 11 on to verse 18. <clears throat> False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Oh, that's a painful thing, isn't it? But it happens. It happens. Christians. You're of the church of the living God, church of God, wanting to live your life according to the scriptures. You run into a Christian and you start talking to him and then you quickly realize, oh boy, this guy or this woman, they're, they're, they just, they're not saved. They turn and rend you. Yeah. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. Evil for good. Uh, hey, you know, you're not saved just because you believe. Okay? Did, uh, I, were you ever broken of yours? Are you a good person? Well, we're all sinners, but okay, but are you a good person? Well, I'm, I'm not that bad. Oh. Bring up the Dahmer thing. Bring up the down, or with some, bring up the Nebuchadnezzar thing. You, what you think, Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven, and you think I'm lost? Yeah, I'm better than. There's your self-righteousness right there, buddy. The more I love you, the less I am loved. See, and the Christians, the world, think you're being a jerk, don't they? Now, granted, some of us do, unfortunately, step over that line of being a jerk. Okay, <laughs> I've done that before. But, you know, to the lost, the truth of God's word is foolishness. So, of course, they're going to be offended. Of course, they're going to be offended. Okay? But as for me, okay, but as for me, 
They may be offended by the truth, but as for me, I want to do what the Lord says. How about you? They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. I have I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavenly, heaven, heavily, heavily, excuse me, as one that mourneth for his mother. Lord, don't let so and so die yet, because if he were to die, he'd go straight to hell. Lord, if it's your will be done that he die and go to hell today, it's your will. But Lord, I pray that maybe you have a little bit more long suffering that you may give him another chance. But how many chances does one get? How many chances does one get? Hmm? Woe be to you when you run out of chances. You ever prayed like that before? You ever pray for an enemy who, who is your enemy? Who you are aware of are, is sick? You know? And they are given life. But yet they continue on in their heresy. That's when the Lord says, like, uh, pray not for these people. Pray not for these people who have made their choice, even in sickness. Of course, I'm making reference to uh, the Inquisitor from Queens, New York. Okay, that's who I'm. That's who I'm thinking of. Um, that poor man. He's got cancer, and he's going to hell. He's going to hell. But there are those out there who are not like that, who have made their choice still kind of teeter-tottered, right? And remember, if you're one of those who are kind of think you're in the gray area, remember, there truly is no gray area. You're either either or. Either or. There is no gray area. You die without Christ, you're going to hell. It's that simple. Okay? Verse 15, But in mine adversity they rejoice, and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me, and ceased not. With hypocritical mockers and feasts, and feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lion from the lions. Yeah. And of course, you know, there are those out there, like I said, the Lord has given you chances. You've pleaded with these people. You've prayed for these people. I know of people that I, we have prayed for who were sick, who went to the hospital and had, you know, were given another chance. And you go to preach to them the truth of the gospel, you still don't want to hear it. Like, Lord, don't let them die. Let, let someone of your body be there one more time to give them every chance to hear the truth, to come to repentance, turning away of themselves and their self-righteousness and turning to God. Okay? Give them another chance. Lord in his long suffering does so, what happens? What happens? Luke chapter 9, verses 57 on to verse 62. Hmm. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Remember about counting the cost? And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes. And birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath, no, hath not where to lay his head. Th that verse, I love that verse. Why? Because you get these Christians uh, all bothered about having their little mansions and their little petty kingdoms that they're making for themselves. And you get the Kevin Kenneth Doplins 
with their mansions and John MacArthur with his mansions and multiple properties with little fortresses on them or whatever. And you read this, and Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. So Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, God manifest in the flesh. Was he basically homeless? <laughs> Talk about imitating Christ, huh? Yeah, 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 but, oh, no, no, no. Uh, imitate Christ, these, these idiots, and I'm being polite. Uh, oh, I don't sin anymore. Oh, you got to stop sinning. Or name it and claim it, right? Imitate Christ. Raise the sick, heal the dead. Wait. <laughs> heal the sick. <laughs> Raise the dead. <laughs> oh boy, huh? <laughs> oh boy, Brad, what's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, let's continue. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, Suffer me first to go and bury my father. She said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God, spiritual. Let the dead bury their dead. It's not our job to coerce people into salvation. God forbid. God forbid. Our job, our job is to live as an example. To preach the word. To be instant in season, out of season. Okay? To reprove, to rebuke, and to correct with all long suffering and doctrine. Yes. To be ambassadors for Christ. Having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. That is our job. But when you come across these people who just will not hear the truth, let the dead bury their dead. But as for me, I'm going to keep on. Keeping on. Walking according to mine integrity, which is according to the scripture. By his righteousness. And another said unto the, uh, and another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Remember Lot's wife? The angel said, Don't look behind you. And isn't it interesting? That's what the devil coadjutors want you to do. They want you to look behind you. You made, you made a mess up and unfortunately a devil knows about it or something like that. Or whatever it is. They, they, they try to keep you here. Don't look back. Don't forget it. Don't forget what's back there. But don't keep looking back there. Don't dwell back there. You see, that's what Satan and his ministers want you to do. No man having put his hand to the plow, the plow, breaking up the ground, okay? And looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And of course, Lot's wife, she looked behind and became a pillar of salt. Why did she look back? Because she was mourning that she was leaving, which was being destroyed by fire. And see, that's what Christianity does. Offers you another Jesus that is okay with you keeping some of these entrapments of the world. The Jesus of the gray area, rather, I should say. And that's where people come in with the, oh, you're going to explain. Stuff like that. 
Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. The set of scriptures is finally getting broken. in. Galatians chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 19. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. But yet guys like Mark the Messenger say that you are because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And they, well, what about James? <laughs> You gotta rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. No man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. A transgressor. Now, as pertaining to salvation, today in this dispensation, you've got to really divide the word of truth. In this dispensation, you come to the Lord on His terms and He saves you. You can't become unsaved. Why? It's not your salvation. See, you're keeping the law. It's your salvation. You're imitating Christ? Huh? <laughs> Good luck. It's your salvation. It's not ours. It's the gift given to us by the Lord. By His grace through our faith. Okay? Salvifically, today, in this dispensation, are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus. And you make the choice and are stupid and go back to your puke, you won't lose your salvation. You'll lose so many other things, but your salvation you will not lose. But see, and this is and this is the vile evil of the easy believers and devils. See, you you won't lose your salvation, but see, you, if you are truly saved, and you are as, a, are as a dog that returns to your own vomit. Okay? <laughs> what happens? You're dragging our Lord through the mud with you. And the easy believers and heretic comes along and says, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. You're still going to heaven. Because you're because you're you're the you're your own God. You're the one who saved yourself. See? See how that works? See. Uh, in Proverbs chapter twenty six, verse eleven, okay? Go there, hold your place. Because we still got one more verse to read. Okay? Proverbs twenty six. What are you doing, Brad? Thank you, part. Proverbs twenty six. Verse 11, okay. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Fool who says in his heart there is no God. Look at verse 13, or verse 12. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? I am saved because I believe. I am saved because I just uttered a couple words all of these all of those void of brokenness contrition and the fear of the Lord seest thou a um, man wise in his own conceit there is more hope of a fool than of him you look at that verse who are those who are wise in their own conceits any one of these Christians in their buildings, 
handing out tracts to them as they're leaving their little precious little services. Oh, they, every, virtually every single one. Well, I don't need that. Are you sure? I beg your pardon? No, I don't think so. Are you sure? Yeah. How are you sure? Hmm? I, you know what I get? You know what I get a lot? I believe. How did you arrive at that belief? Most of them won't give me the, the time of their day to answer that. Uh, okay. How did you arrive at your belief? Let's talk. I don't want to talk to you. Here, you take that. Fine. Christian. <laughs> what? Want to have some fun sometime? Go to a church building. Not, don't go in there. Don't bring a curse upon yourself. Wait, you know, by the time they're all, uh, open or done with their stuff, go ahead, go to the cars and try or put tracks in the cars, you know, in the windshields, like the ones here. Let me show you real quick. A little rabbit. Okay. These are the ones, uh, Fellowship Track Lead, and I got the link uh, on the channel. These are the ones that I use now, uh, Fellowship Track Lead. I got a couple other ones. But see, these, what you do is you fold them like this, and then you stick them in the windshield wiper, okay? So when they come out, they see, you know, go ahead and get some of these or make some your own. I know uh, my brother from, our brother, excuse me, from Croatia, he, he was doing that himself, you know? And you take it and you fold it and you stick it. Your body doesn't even have to touch the car because I've talked to a peace officer before um, about tracting, uh, and he said, you know, so, you know, my, when I tracked, Putting those in the windshields, my body, nothing of my body touches the vehicle. It's just, you know, and I always put my hand behind my back, and uh, Brother Alexander can uh, also attest for this, because he's done it too. And you take it and you stick it in the windshield wiper, and now you're, not one part of your body touches the car. And here, at least in Illinois, um, that's the thing. Uh, that uh, The one peace officer says, like, well, so long as your, your body isn't really touching the car, you know, then, you know, they can't get you for that. <laughs> that's, that's how it has gotten nowadays. Okay? That's how it has gotten nowadays. But try that at a church building. <laughs> See what kind of, you know, most of the times, you know, the Lord might tell you, don't even waste your time. But if he doesn't say anything and gives you free reign to do so, try it. Look at their reaction. Look at their reaction. You know? scary. And looking at verse 12 again, there's more hope of a fool than of him. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? The Christians who are saved because they just believe or because they uttered something. All of those void of brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. Okay? There's more hope of a fool who says in his heart than him. That says that there is no God, a fool that says in his heart that there is no God. There's more hope of him, more hope for him. Basically, there's more hope for an atheist. You, as a church of the living God, we brethren, are, I've had better conversations with atheists. Not all of them. Some of them can get pretty crazy. But some of them that are actually willing to speak with you. They can be, you know, really good conversations. You know, they can be. But a Christian, especially in their parking lot with a tract, I don't need that. Are you sure about that, buddy? Oh, I'm already saved. Yeah, how do you know that? I believe. Now, how do you arrive at that belief? Look, I don't got... Who are you? Who are you? You know? <laughs> Interesting, huh? And... Back in Galatians chapter 2. Yeah. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Won't cost you your salvation. It'll just cost you everything else. And then again, does the name of our Lord, whom you apparently represent, does he mean anything? The one who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture, who heals your diseases, um, the, the disease of sin, okay, 
of wickedness who uh, provides for you, does he mean anything to you? Then you got some putts. Don't, you shouldn't do that, but don't worry about it if you do. But For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. We got it. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And you're going to return to your vomit, huh? I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And of course, of course, uh, while, while we're on this uh, thing about a dog returning to his vomit, okay, <laughs> uh, some women out there, it's, uh, it's only about men. Uh, it's only about men. Yeah, yeah, there, woman. Uh, first, uh, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 22. Yeah. Hmm. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his male own vomit again, and the sow, peg, that was washed to her female wallowing in the mire. But yet Christianity tells you that it's okay to be worldly to an extent. How close, how close can you get to the edge and still be a Christian? <laughs> well, most Christians like to go skydiving, don't they? Jump right off of it. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. We want verses 44 on to verse 52. Acts chapter 13, verses 44 on to verse 52. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Yes, because they were losing their uh, position of preeminence, like Shimon the sorcerer. Okay, they were envious, not jealousy. Brother Alexander one day is going to do a video on that. You watch. If he have a, uh, he, wait a minute. He might have already. Brother, you watch this. If you have done the video on that, in the comment section, please. I might find it and put it in the description box. But anyway. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Yes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? But see, ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Look at that verse. Okay? People who reject the true gospel. Okay? They're choosing. Most of them, I mean... If you're, uh, most of them are choosing the lake of fire, hell. Think about that. Satan has got so many of these people, especially these Christians, so messed up in their heads. The, the, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. No, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard that, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all all the region and ordained by the way you know who does the ordaining the Lord and how does the Lord ordain people unto eternal life when you come to him on his terms the way of the cross not booting the door out of the way and climbing up some other way 
Okay? Y'all devils really try very hard to creep in your elect and non-elect thing. Okay? But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women. And the chief men of the city, very similar to how it was in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, where the women were running the roost and ruling over the men and making the spiritual decisions for them. Okay? Read that. Read about that in Jeremiah, chapter 44. Okay? Okay? Some of you women hate this. God, man, woman, children. Not God, woman, child, pet, man. Okay? But the Jews stood up to devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into Iconium. And the disciples, disciples were filled with joy and with holy ghosts. Ghost, excuse me. Excuse me. Shake off the dust. I know that's hard to do sometimes when it's really personal. It's your mother, your father, your husband or your wife, your brother or sister by blood. But if you love them more than you love the Lord, there's a problem. There's a problem. There's a big problem. Okay? There's a very big problem. Psalm 41. Psalm 41. Psalm 41. As for me, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Nobody wants to hear the truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The doors are still open. Praise the Lord. He still gives opportunity to witness. There are some out there who have ears to hear. But that's shrinking. Shrinking. Titanic is sinking, 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 sinking. Who sunk the Titanic? Psalm 41. Psalm 41. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? <laughs> there are actually people, my enemies, that say that of me. They want to see me go away. All, me and my, the little channel that the Lord has given me. Uh, by the way, I don't want more. I mean, praise praise the Lord. Thank you to those who subscribe to this channel the Lord has given me. I don't want to ever get up into the thousands. I, 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 I want to keep it right where it's at. Okay, I want to keep right where everything is at. Good for me. Get work done. Okay, but let's continue. And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. Yeah, because his heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Yeah. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. Shows. He, he, he shows what he truly is. You shall know them by his fruits. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. Aha! Yeah. 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 I know of a certain individual who I think tried to get a hold of me. Matthew, but a certain individual who uh, does that, whisper, trying to get people against me, you know. And, hey, in a way, thank you, because some psychopaths are now away, <laughs> okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you, okay? But anyway, but yes. Yes, all that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. And any one of the church of the living God, this has happened to you too. 
one way or another. Your family whispers about you. Your so-called friends that you used to know. But never mind them. It hurts more when it's those who are close to you, doesn't it? Oh, that hurts the worst. When your own family, who you love and who you die, who you would die for, and who you pray for, do this. Do this. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. This video came about because of a conversation about that, about virtually this very thing, about a dear brother of mine whom I love very much, who's the only one in the midst of family that's against him. Virtually the entire family against him. Virtually. Not all. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. Now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. <laughs> yeah. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. And you have not triumphed over me. The Lord won't let you. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity and settest me before thy face forever. And is this psalm, yes, another psalm attributed to David, keeping the law, doing it God's way, so his integrity was based off of what God had written. And settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and amen. Yes, as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity. Mine integrity based upon scripture. Okay? Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Psalm 55, verses 10 on to verse 19. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow were in the midst of it. The whole world is going to hell in a handbasket. Those around you speak evil against you. They whisper about you. Try to destroy you. But as for me, as for me, I'm going to live according to what God has said. You go do whatever you're going to do. As for me, day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. The seeking guile depart not from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then would I have hid myself from him. But it was thou, man mine equal, my guide, and mine acquaintance. This hurts. <laughs> well, he does. We took sweet counsel together and walked on to the house of God in company. Yes. Yes, when you got someone who you thought was a friend and you actually took sweet counsel together in Scripture and it was beautiful. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, by the whispering of someone, A, you find out what they really are. And you find out what they're, how they claim to be saved, what that's based upon. Sight! Wow. Wow. It hurts. It hurts tremendously. It does hurt tremendously. But in re retrospect, removing those things that are shaken, that that, that, is not, that, that that cannot be shaken may remain. Not to a certain individual. You meant to do me in by that. 
But I actually thank you because looking back at it, um, that was a good thing. That was a good thing. It was a good thing, even though it hurt tremendously. Losing a friend, someone who you spake with often, spent hours with in your so-called fellowship because you thought you were like-minded. Then an accusation comes from a specific source, eh? Trying to turn everybody against them. And I mean this seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Because the chaff is going away from all of us at the Church of the Living God. Haven't, haven't you noticed that, brother, sister? Haven't you noticed that? That God is weeding out from us those who say they are and they ain't? Haven't you noticed that? That list of friends, that list of brethren that you thought were, that were there, going to be there until the redemption of the purchased possession. It's like, boop, whoa, wait a minute, what happened? Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick, alive, into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, as for me, your faith might be based upon what you see. But as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them. Even he that abideth of old. Shalah. That old devil, the serpent, Satan. Yes. God shall hear and afflict them. Even he that abideth of old. Shalah. Why? Because they have no changes. Therefore they fear not God. He hath put forth his hand against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. <laughs> Verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart, and his words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Verse 16 again. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall sing. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. Verses 7 on to verse 19. 7 on to verse 19. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame hath covered my face. I have become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. And of course, John in John chapter what is that two verses thirteen on to verse seventeen makes mention of this very verse here. Okay, this part right here, uh, our Lord fulfilled. Okay, when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment. And I became a proverb to them. Because you're not a Christian. You have the church of the living God. <laughs> There's a big distinction between those of us who are saved of the church of God than those who are Christians, even King James Bible believing Christians. There's a big difference between us. We're not like them. Okay? I made sackcloth also my garment. And I became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gate speak against me. Those, the upper echelons. Remember at the gate, that's where a lot of the business was done back in these times. So someone that sat at the gate, like Job sat at the gate, that was a, a position of prominence. The higher up, the upper echelons. The esoteric. The Nicolaitans. They that sit in the gate speak against me. I was the song of the drunkards. Boy, isn't that the case, huh, brethren? The uh, esoteric 
Mock us. You're being de derisive, divisive. You're causing division. You're making a strife of words. And, and the drunkards. Uh, those guys, they, they, they live by the authorized version of the scriptures. Even they themselves don't get along with each other. What are we going to do, right? <laughs> Let's continue. But as for me, look at all those things that happen uh, from verse 7 on to where it says, but as for me. Look at that. Look at that. Family and friends turned against you. People attack you, mock you, make fun of you. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord. In an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Deliver me out of the mire. Let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me out of the deep waters. And in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, where waters are likened unto peoples, let not the water flood overflow me, neither let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, and hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before thee. But yet he is our hope. He is all that we have. But as for me, verse 13, my prayer is unto thee. It's not our job to convert people. The Lord does, is the one who does the converting, not us. If someone doesn't want to hear, pray, you wept, you fasted, Alone. Like I said, the condition, the state that we are in nowadays, dear brethren. First Corinthians chapter four. First Corinthians chapter four. Verses ten on to verse fourteen. Most of you have gone through this, but those of you who are newly saved. You've got to accept the reality of the situation. We are the minority of Jews and Gentiles. In salvation, there's no distinction. Culturally, that's different. We are the minority, and because we are the minority, we are not Christians. We are fools for Christ's sake. Ye are wise in Christ, Christians. We are weak, but ye are strong. Look at the num multitude of Christians here online. King James Bible believing Christians. Look at the number of them. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offspring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you, yea, and all who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That doesn't make it easier, but it happens. But it happens. And all we can do, brethren, all we can do all we can do is praise the Lord. That's all we can do. That's all we can do is praise the Lord. As for me, all we can do is praise the Lord. That's all we can do, brethren. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. One second. So what can we do? James chapter James chapter 5 verses 17 unto the close of the chapter. 
Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed. Leonard Ravenhill did a whole sermon on that verse, and he prayed. Might want to check it out. Be, be careful when listening to Leonard Ravenhill. Um, I believe Leonard Ravenhill is in heaven. I believe he was a saved man. He, he had some really deep issues. Uh, teeter-tottered of sinless perfection. Lightly dispensational. Yeah, but, uh, he, yeah. Uh, like I said, Leonard Ravenhill did a whole thing on this. He prayed. Okay. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And he gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Of course, James is written for the Jews during the time of James' trouble. But see, again, he prayed. He prayed. you got to put legs in your prayers sometimes. There are certain prayers where putting legs in will be of no effect. But a lot of the times you've got to put legs in your prayers. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Yes. Acts chapter 13. Verses 1 out of verse 3. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, and the Lord is that spirit, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, laid their hands on them, he sent them away. Prayer and fasting. See, Charismatics preach to you about fasting to get worldly things, to get that car, to get money. Um, remember at, uh, how we looked in Ezekiel chapter 9 about those who wept for Jerusalem? See, we fast today for an answer in Scripture, for mercy, not to get worldly things. If that's why you're fasting to get some worldly gain of something, you're fasting for the wrong reason. You're fasting for strife and debate. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Oh. Oh, Daniel chapter 9. I wish the prayer of Daniel that he makes is a really, I mean, Daniel, who is beloved of his God. Daniel, okay? Daniel, his prayer, Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 on to verse 6. Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 on to verse 6. You read this entire prayer of Daniel. It's incredible. How many people pray like this today? And I set my face unto the Lord, uh, Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 out of verse 6. And I set my face unto the Lord God, to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Sackcloth and ashes was a visible sign of reverting to dirt from whence we came. Okay, not, in the, not necessary for today. Okay, if you want to, go ahead. It's not a requirement though, okay? And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. And said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned, including himself in that. Okay? And have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Daniel is putting himself in there. Not hiding under the cover that we're all this. He was including himself in that. As that. 
not hiding un under cover like so many of them do. Well, we're all sinners. Oh, you're trying to make yourself of the many, not taking personal accountability and responsibility. See? Read, read Daniel chapter 9 and his prayer. How many of us pray like this? And let's finish this in Ezekiel. Let's finish this in Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Verses 3 on to verse 5. And he said unto me, oh, Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 3, on to verse 5, excuse me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do not send thee unto them. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them, whether they will hear, whether they will forbear. And Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 and verse 7. And he said unto me, Son of man, Go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with, my, speak with my words unto them. Not the words of men, my words. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. I, I like this. Not to a many people, not to a many, not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Get a load of this. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Okay? There is more hope of a fool than someone who is wise in his own conceits. There is more hope of an atheist who is more willing to hear the truth than a Christian who thinks they're saved because they just believe or because they uttered a sentence. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. They will not hearken unto me. All the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. And finally, Joshua. The one that every single one of you immediately thought of. Yes. Yes. Joshua. Chapter 24. Like I said, brethren, battle lines have been uh, drawn in the sand. Heresy has taken deep root. People are worshiping men rather than God. People have their heroes that they look to instead of seeking the Lord through the scriptures. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the little g gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, other side of the flood of the world, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, we will, excuse me, we will serve the Lord.
Christianity with all their heroes, with all their denominations, with all their craziness. Atheists wanting to believe in millions and billions of years a galaxy far, far away. The Lord opens up a doorway for you to preach, to speak to people and they don't want to hear. You're in the midst of people who you love but yet are all lost and going to hell. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me, as for me, I will seek the Lord. It hurts. That hurts. But then again, do you love your family more than you love God? Does God come first? Does the Lord Jesus Christ come first? He did. We've gone over that plenty of times. It hurts. It's sad. It's heartbreaking. It can be it can be debilitating. Be of good cheer. Our Lord has overcome the world. And sooner or later we're going to hear our names and we're going to be redeemed. And then all hell's going to break loose. <laughs> you don't have to be here for that. You know, the time has long passed you screwing around playing games. Why don't you get serious just for once in your life and consider these things. Let us reason together, you and I. And brethren, I know, I know, I've had many people who I thought was a friend betray me, turn on me. It doesn't get easier, but that's the way it is because people are lovers of their own selves. Got to let it go. Yeah, yeah, Brad, you, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. That is going to be it for this video. I hope this might help encourage a couple of you. Because um, like I said, I had a conversation with a brother who just, just hearing, just hearing, and the tone of his voice. There's hope there, but... The, the battle gets weary. You, you get tired, you know, you really do. But be of good cheer. And brethren, brother, you cannot be that busy in your life to not allot some time for our Lord in the scriptures. Okay? Okay? You got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. Well, what? You got no time to spend at least, a, 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 at least a proverb for the corresponding day. At least a chapter. Come on now. Come on, you know that you ain't gonna get sympathy from me on that. Okay, yeah, it happens. But if you're totally neglecting the scripture time with the Lord. Where are you going to get comfort? This is where you get comfort from, brother, sister. The scriptures. Especially the Psalms. You're not going to the world for comfort, are you? Boy. This is what you need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All oh, this will be added to you. It's going to be it. I'm doing something out there. And there's a guy looking right at me. Hi. <laughs> we love you. Pray for one another, brethren. Pray for each other. Get up. Contact your brothers and sisters. Email or whatever. Well, that doesn't count. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Contact your brothers. See how you can pray for one another. Talk to one another. Pray for one another. 
wash one another's feet. Pray for us. Please, and thank you to those of you who do pray for us. We, we need all the prayers we can get. Oh, boy, we need all the prayers we can get. We love you. Thank you for watching this if you do. We will see you in the next video. Never, whatever that will be.